Last year, Electronic Arts shut down Visceral Games. They were working on a single-player Star Wars project that has by now been talked about quite a bit. EA's CFO Blake Jorgensen had this to say, As we kept reviewing the game, it continued to look like a much more linear game, which people don't like as much today as they did five years ago or ten years ago. And both he and the company he represents are wrong. Why? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, let's talk about why EA is wrong about single-player games. Now, we don't often start off saying X company is wrong in these, so I feel there's a little more explanation in order. EA, a company that sells video games, and has done so for many decades, is asserting something about the entirety of the industry of video games and all the people who enjoy it that we at Game Ranks believe is wrong. Now, obviously, everybody wanted the single player Star Wars game, but it's not the most important thing in the world. Yet, it manages to be a lightning rod for this topic due to its sacrificial lamb status in this bizarre narrative where there is just no interest in single player games. In a blog post, EA's Patrick Soderlin so perfectly exemplifies the attitude I'm talking about. He said, Our visceral studio has been developing an action-adventure title set in the Star Wars universe. In its current form, it was shaping up to be a story-based, linear adventure game. Throughout the development process, we've been testing the game concept with players, listening to the feedback about how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time to come, we needed to pivot the design. Now, aside from the fact that at least some visceral employees lost their jobs, because saying we're in the midst of shifting as many of the team as possible to other projects and teams at EA, as many as possible. However, that means not all. Aside from that, the Star Wars experience he described is something that I would vastly prefer to anything that I can enjoy for a long time to come, because enjoy for a long time to come means monetization platform that goes on indefinitely in the eyes of a studio executive and does not have anything to do with replay value, which is probably what it sounded like. This is now the second Star Wars game like this that people were very excited for, and yet the rug was basically pulled up from underneath them. Star Wars 1313 had a similar story in which basically people were very interested in a sort of Uncharted-like Star Wars experience, but it went away. This time it went away specifically because the executives are thinking about the fact that they want a game that people just don't stop playing. One thing they fail to realize is that that is any game that people like. If people like a game, people will go back to it. They may not spend their entire lives on it, but that wouldn't necessarily be a good thing. A single-player, linear, narrative-driven game, regardless of genre, is a game that needs an endpoint to be satisfying. But if a game has an endpoint, you can't charge people continually for little things that they might need along the way forever. And if the character in the game has a customizable appearance, it's certainly not possible to keep getting people to customize it with cosmetic items that come out of a loot box once they've finished the game. I mean, unless they choose to play the game again. And while the rhetoric that comes out of EA and other companies like EA is that people aren't interested in these games, I feel like they're trying to make people not interested in the games as opposed to are actually just saying what they're seeing. The recent co-op narrative game A Way Out sold so much more in just its first week than EA thought it would sell in the entirety of 2018. In a leaked marketing document from EA last year, EA had forecasted it would sell around 200,000 copies in 2018. However, the game sold a million copies its first week. That's five times the year-long estimate they had for it. Now, A Way Out is a game for a very specific kind of person, and apparently more of that specific kind of person exist than EA thinks. A Way Out is a very niche single-player, very linear co-op narrative game that is very specifically focused on narrative mechanics. Another game that has happened to hit incredibly hard very recently is God of War. God of War is not only a critical darling, but it is also an audience slash fan favorite. 
God of War's meta score as well as average user review is incredibly high, significantly higher than a lot of the quote unquote games as a service model games. And while yes, there are multiplayer games on the Nintendo Switch, it leans very heavily on single player experiences such as Mario Odyssey or Zelda Breath of the Wild, and the Nintendo Switch has oversold its forecast by 3 million units. Nintendo originally thought they were going to sell 15 million Switches in the amount of time that has passed, and it turns out they've sold 18 million. They've sold over 10 million copies of Super Mario Odyssey, which means roughly 60% of Switch users own a copy of it, 9.2 million copies of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 8.48 million copies of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which by the way, makes it the best-selling Zelda game of all time, and even the new Kirby game, which, let's face it, is not the best Kirby game, had the best debut in Kirby history, selling 1.2 million. All of these are single-player, at least somewhat linear experiences, at least compared to what our EA executives have been saying. While Breath of the Wild does break the mold a little bit, ultimately there is a story with a beginning and end, and all of these games have plenty of replay value, honestly. Even Kirby Star Allies is like a decent game. It's not the best Kirby, like I said, but it's certainly worth playing. And for people who like it, it's certainly worth playing again. It's not just me saying that single player games are not even close to dead. It's that there is a ton of evidence that good single player games are a pretty easy to profit from venture. And yet for many, many years, the single player parts of games have been getting less and less attention. And these corporations are saying it's because people don't want them. But it doesn't seem to be indicative of what people want, except for them. They want Want this. Well, I'm sure they don't complain when a project with a linear beginning and end makes them a buttload of money. It also costs them a buttload of money. AAA games cost more than they've ever cost to make, having staffs of sometimes three to five hundred people working on them. I just want to make a point about God of War here that I think counteracts the entirety of this people don't want single player games idea. God of War is a console exclusive. It's pretty late in the PS4 life cycle, but God of War is certainly being used as a system seller. It's not as if they don't want to sell more PS4s and don't want to accumulate new PlayStation users. They also want to satisfy their current users and make them feel as though they're not being neglected, give them good reasons to stick around with PlayStation and not jump ship. God of War is not games as a service. It's not multiplayer. It has no microtransactions, other than the fact that it has implemented some very good modern gameplay mechanics into the God of War formula. It's refreshingly free of all the crap that we associate as the bad side of modern gaming. If the thing that people wanted was an ongoing, persistent virtual world in which they have to pay for virtual currency and open loot boxes for cosmetic and even sometimes mechanical objects, wouldn't that be what they would do instead of a single-player narrative game with a beginning and a finite end? What large gaming corporations like about non-linear, persistent online multiplayer games isn't that they think players like them more, it's that they know the social experience of interfacing with other people is enough to get you in, and that the business model over time is much more profitable and doesn't have a cutoff point. If you're saying EA can probably make more money with some random online world set in the Star Wars universe that you can make purchases in with real money, well then yeah, EA is right about single player games. They definitely can make more money over a longer period of time, and they have to make less games. They just have to make add-ons to the current game. But if you're saying that gamers aren't interested in single-player games, in linear experiences with a beginning and an end that tell us something about the human experience, make us feel something, take a critical look at something in the world, you know, games as art, well then EA is wrong. We want single-player games, in most cases, more than we want mediocre online games. Certainly Fortnite is fun as hell, and I spend a lot of time in it. And yes, we all spend time in other games that we have friends in, and interact in, and compete in. There's nothing bad about that, in fact, it's good. It's just that because apparently that's worth more to them, they need to try to dictate what we want. And, one more time, they're wrong. What are some of your favorite single player experiences? Are there any from way back in the day that you still go back to now? Isn't it kind of 
impossible to go back to, say, online games that have been shut down, and yet a single-player game is there. Leave us a comment. We're interested in both your thoughts and your favorite games from the past. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed now, it would of course be a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on GameRex.